is focusing mainly on rate of change. We will get to where we focus on slope eventually, um, actually in the next lesson. This is kind of an intro to it. So um, rate of change, which actually is the same thing as slope. But when we talk rate of change, what we're saying is it's the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. Let's just recap dependent and independent. Do you remember X and Y? Which one was dependent? Which one was independent? X was independent was X and then dependent was Y. Right. So your independent variable is like I can put whatever I want in for X and what I get out depends. So what I get for Y depends on what I put in for X, right? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So rate of change. I'm going to give you, for this first example, are we blinking up there? Why do I feel like I keep seeing light? No? Um, I'm going to give you a chart. It could be. Okay, and in this chart, my independent is time in minutes, and my dependent is distance in feet. Lost of their walking, huh? Okay, um, <clears throat> so if my time, we're going to put in one, two, three, and four. And my distance is 260, that's a six, 520, 780, and 1,040. So I'm just giving you all these numbers. You're not plugging them into a formula to come up with them. You will be given a chart, excuse me, um, and you need to come up with if the rate of change is constant, okay? So that's what they're going to ask you here. Is the rate of change constant? Okay, here's what I mean by that. In order for it to be constant, it means it has to be changing at the same rate the whole way through. Um, Micah, what are you doing back there? Notes? Okay. Um, so in order for the rate of change to be constant, we said the change in our Y value over the change in our X value has to remain throughout, okay? So the way that we check this, um, is we say we're going to check the change in distance because that's my um, dependent and put that over my change in time, my independent for this particular problem. Okay. Um, how do you find the change in something? How do I find the change in my distance from here to here? You subtract it, okay? Right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go 520 minus 260. Mm. 520 minus 260, okay? And what I get is 260, okay? Then I'm going to do 780 minus 520, Okay, what I get, what are you doing? Stop being weird. Um, that equals 260, okay? Then I'm going to subtract here, 1,040 minus 780. That equals 260. So that's a really good sign that my change in my distance each time was 260. Then I got to look at, where did that blue line come from? I don't want to mess it up. Okay, um, then I got to look here. Is my change in each one of these the same? Two minus one is one, okay? Three minus two is one. 
four minus three is one. So we're just subtracting each time. That means my rate of change is this number, the change in my y, over this number, the change in my x, okay? So I'm gonna go 260 over one is my rate of change. Um, notice if I jump down a level, 260 over one. If I jump down one more level, 260 over one. So if it stays the same all the way through, then my rate of change is constant. So when it asks, is the rate of change constant, our answer would be yes, because our rate of change was always 260 over one. Okay, Avery. then it would not be constant. So then what would the fraction be? You, you couldn't find one because it's not constant, right? It has to be the same all the way through, and then we would say that is our rate of change. So if it changes and it's not constant, then you just say not constant, and you don't have to give a rate of change. And then X, okay. will X always be like the, the denominator? The X will always be the denominator, yep. It's always going to be the right side over the left side, okay? Um, so my rate of change here is 260 feet per one minute, right? So they're moving at 260 feet per minute. That's the rate of change, okay? Gentlemen, don't look at them. Keep this way, enough. You guys are very distracted today. So is it, hold on, you said It's always the um, dependent over the independent. So it's always going to be the change. Um, a triangle means change, delta. The change in your y value over the change in your x value. So it's always going to be the y over the x. Okay? And we'll do a lot more with that. Um, another name for rate of change is slope. We're going to get more into slope um, the more we do this stuff. But another way you can say it, have you guys ever heard this before? Mm -hmm. Rise over run? Yes. Okay, so rise is this way, right? How high up or down you go. Oh my goodness. Chill out. I'm sorry. Just stop. I'm sorry. Um, so this is your up and down. The run is your left and right. Okay, so it's rise. How, how far did you change this way? Over run, how far did you change this way? Okay? All right. Um, so we're going to find the slope of a couple lines, and then we'll get more into the slope details down the road. But what we're going to do today is this. Example two. Let's say you have a graph. And I give you, yeah, ooh, yeah, I have some up there. Um, let's say I give you a point at negative 2, negative 1, and another point at 1, 1. And then our line is here. Okay. Um, if I ask you what is the rate of change or what is the slope, okay, like I said, we'll get more into calling it slope as we go, um, but rate of change and slope are the same thing. What is the rate of change? What is the slope of this line? Couple rules. You always work from left to right. So if I want to find the slope here doing rise over run, I start at the point that is further left. So I'm going to start here, and then it's rise over run. So am I going up and down first or left and right first? Up and, down. up and down. You're doing the rise part first. So I had to move one, two units up. Okay, so that's my rise. What's my run? Three. A positive one, two, three. So two units up, three units to the right. Okay. What if instead I had this line. OK, 
Okay, now if this is my line, I'm still going from left to right. So the furthest left point is this one, and I'm moving to that one. So if I start at the one on the left, if I start with my rise, how far up or down do I need to move? You move two down, one, two, to be across from that point. When you move down, what happens to your number? It's negative. So we're going to say negative two. Okay, and then how far over? Three. three to the right, and that's a positive three. Here's the deal. If you are always moving left to right, your bottom number will always be positive. What are you doing now? I don't even know you. Who is this, Brandon? Candy Brandon. This is Candy Brandon? Okay, Candy Brandon is not allowed in my class anymore. I need the old Brandon back. Bring him back. Not get out. I mean, stop being Candy Brandon and be Brandon who shows up and pays attention. That's what I mean. Okay. Um, so two-thirds was the rise over run for this line. Negative two-thirds was the rise over run for that line. What do you notice about them? Do you see a relationship? They're both 2 over 3. Okay, one's positive, one's negative. So notice, this is a positive slope or a positive rate of change, a positive rise over run. Where is the line moving? If you're going left to right, is the line on its way up or on its way down? down. On its way up, right? This line is increasing. It's going up, okay? The negative one, the line is on its way down if you're going left to right. So that's how it will always work. If it is a positive slope, when you go left to right, it will always be moving upward. When you go left to right and it's a negative slope, it'll always be moving downward. Dustin, oh my word. I'm about to like throw things at you people. Just stop. Um, okay, questions on that? Do we need another one? Because no, I feel like you're kind of just a zoo, right?